Hello, fellow humans. Let's have a conversation about art. Sweet. My name is Jason, and in this video, I will be your guide into an issue that is very important in the art community. How does an artist gain and maintain relevance executing their own visions as well as the vision of the person who commissioned their work? To answer this question, I specifically explored an area of art that billions of people look at every second of every day. For all I know, it might just be the most looked at form of visual arts in general. Album covers. Now I bet you're asking, why Jason? Why album covers? You never hear about the artists behind album covers. Well, here's why. Album covers are the perfect art form to explore here, as it is a key factor that plays into the image and success of both the music artist and the one who designs it. A great example of this is Drake's Certified Loverboy album. This is one of the most talked about albums of 2021 because of both the album cover itself as well as the songs within. The album cover is both that of artistic values, CLB being a form of art for reaction, but also an advertisement of a narrative within, Way Too Sexy being a great pairing to the cover. You see, growing up, we we're always told to never judge a book by its cover, as the story within is the ultimate representation of what the writer envisioned. However, the fact that we even need to say this in the first place is the very reason why cover design matters, as it proves we naturally judge a book by its cover. In an article by Sean Connors and Johnny Allred, they explored the very issue, specifically exploring book covers, something that plays the exact same role as album covers. In their article, Picturing Diversity, Why Readers Should Always Judge Books by Their Covers, they use the book Ask the Passengers as a great example as the book's cover has been changed for the very reason why covers matter. The original design includes a woman laying in a field of wheat with her hand blocking out the sunlight. Although this composition and image itself is very aesthetically pleasing from an artistic standpoint, it does nothing for representing the narrative or messages the author is trying to convey. In the recreated cover, we see a completely different approach with a very stylized, more childlike representation with the inclusion of two characters just inches away from each other, as if they might kiss. Although this composition is completely different, as well as a style, it does a great job of expressing the overall message of the narrative. The viewer knows exactly what the undertones and general narrative of the author is trying to convey. The style of the art is more suited to the young adult audience that the story is designed for, and represents the love and potential struggle of LGBTQ plus communities. This provides great insight into the biggest reason as to why the cover, whether it be a magazine, album, movie, or book, is so important. As humans, we make our decisions almost instantly and subconsciously. If we see something that piques our interest, we pick it up and explore it further. If we don't, odds are we will never be looking into that again. This is the beauty, power, and importance of the cover artist creating a representation of the message and narrative of the writer, band, rapper, and so forth to ultimately sell it to the onlooker. It's about marketing the substance within. Now let's break down some album covers and some artists you may potentially know or at least be familiar with some of their works. I'm going to start off with an artist that almost everybody should be familiar with, British graphic designer and co-founder of the album cover design company Hypnosis, Aubrey Powell better known as the man behind the visual identity of Pink Floyd. How did he best express Pink Floyd's vision as well as his own? Now, Aubrey Powell started off with the design of the album Animals and their world tour. However, the reason why Powell is largely credited for the visual identity of Pink Floyd is not just for the covers or posters. Powell was so good at representing Pink Floyd's image of psychedelic rock that he branched out and explored videography when music videos came out as well as breaking into set design. Although almost everything he created differed greatly from graphics to videos and sets, he maintained a unifying element of the manipulation of 3D space to add, enhance, and accurately reflect the magic and wonder of Pink Floyd's voice, a voice that is an abstraction of the values and perception of the reality around us. Now this next one is a different example, but a very prolific one, and one that I am very passionate about as this is the first album cover I ever explored from an artistic standpoint. The cover is known as Led Zeppelin IV, but originally meant to have no title at all. This album 
is best known for one of pop culture's greatest points of interest of all time, Stairway to Heaven. The creation of this album cover is very different though, in both the design itself and the creation of it. It was created during a time when Led Zeppelin was free to do whatever they wanted in terms of creative control for both the music and album covers. The front cover displays a painting that Robert Patton had found in a thrift store hanging on a demolished wall, with it wrapping around the back to the cover, displaying photographs of skyscrapers. This was meant to be a representation of the destruction of the old to make way for modern society, a great design that represented the narrative of Led Zeppelin. However, what makes this album cover so famous is the design within. In complete contrast to the outside cover, there's a depiction of a hermit, a figure used in tarot, meant to represent the act of seeking truth. The figure stands on top of a mountain, lighting and guiding away for a figure below. The message here was clearly a spiritual one, something that greatly represented what Led Zeppelin was all about, feeding the narrative of the song, Stairway to Heaven. Now I'm finishing off this video with somebody who is so iconic but yet unheard of, Milton Glaser. For those of you who don't know, Glaser created the I Love New York logo back in 1976. Now the reason why I'm including him is not for this, but his unique background in general. Glaser studied in Italy, learning still life painting and printmaking, and ultimately joined the pop art movement and applying it to a variety of media such as book covers, advertising, poster designs, magazine covers, and album covers. More specifically, Bob Dylan's album covers, including Bob Dylan's greatest hits and the times they are a-changing. These covers were designed in a pop art style due to change in many cover designs during the 60s with the introduction of psychedelic music. They were simple, yet bold and attention-grabbing. Everything you'd want to get an onlooker's attention and pick it up out of pure curiosity. Now I included these three different stories here to show you guys that there's no set path to being successful in this. You can be a painter, architect, videographer, musician, and so on. You don't need to just commit to one thing, like Milton Glaser. You can explore in other art forms that interest you and be successful, like Aubrey Powell. It all ultimately comes down to treating your art as an advertisement. What's the message they want portrayed, and what's the message you want to portray?